What are some complications when dealing with ADAS on older vehicles? I'm Jason Stahl, and we're going to find out next in the AirPro Diagnostics Collision Garage. What happens to ADAS systems over time? Vehicle manufacturers test and retest systems and validate that the vehicles and all their components will last the expected life of the vehicle. But when we look at how long they can go, testing in labs and certain conditions cannot simulate real life and account for the many variables that the average vehicle is subject to, such as environment and owners failing to clean and or maintain the vehicle. Another variable to consider is the events from human error that happen to a vehicle during its life, such as minor bumps and bruises that can cause unseen damage. But constant fatigue and wear and tear along with those minor bumps and grinds all add to damage that can cause parts or system failures. We've all experienced the unrelated prior damage or UPD scenario in the auto repair industry. Explaining to customers that the UPD will need to be corrected to complete repairs is a difficult conversation for everyone. But there are some best practices that may help to spot the UPD before it becomes an issue later or at the end of the repair. Customer interview. When the customer is dropping off the vehicle, ask them if all their systems are working. Ask them to describe what the vehicle does to validate that they understand how it works. If you get a, I think, or I'm not sure, you just identified that they may not know or the system is off either by customer choice, if that's an option, or by malfunction. Pre-repair scans. Researching any DTCs and how they will relate to the repairs. Knowing which systems are experiencing errors will give you the starting point of how you'll need to proceed to complete the accident-related repairs and what systems must be looked at to complete your repairs and calibrations. Pre-drive validation. When a vehicle comes in for repairs, Validating if the ADAS and other features are operating has become a standard procedure for many shops. We hear so many times, it worked before I brought it in. In reality, there are two scenarios here. Number one, it did not work. Number two, it did not work and the customer was oblivious to that fact. When a vehicle is towed in your shop, this becomes difficult and all you'll have is the pre-repair scan to work with. If the direct damage is to the rear of the vehicle, could that UPD to the front affect any ADAS features, such as blind spot calibrations, to be performed after the direct damage is repaired? Through experience gained over time from working with ADAS and other electronics in vehicles, we've learned that ADAS features are intertwined or fused with other systems in the vehicle. A damage sensor or control module could affect other systems in the vehicle. In many cases, an experienced technician with the right tool and software could access individual modules to uncover the true root cause. An example would be a DTC in the transmission that is limiting the communication on vehicle speed. This DTC is preventing a successful dynamic calibration of the camera mounted on the windshield for lane keep assist, lane departure warning, and automatic emergency braking. The static calibration may be successful, but the vehicle speed is an integral part of the system's operation during the dynamic calibration. Technicians have learned that with some vehicle manufacturers, when a post-repair scan is performed and all codes are cleared, a calibration may be successful as long as the calibration is completed on that key cycle. If the key is turned off and, say, a dynamic test is attempted on a different cycle of that key, the calibration will fail because the transmission DTC code returns. Now, another scan to clear codes must be done, and hopefully the technician reads the instructions on how to do the dynamic test. Otherwise, another company or dealer will complete the calibration and never tell you what was wrong. It seems in this industry that people guard their little tricks and trade secrets. As vehicles age, we'll start to see more and more how legacy systems such as ABS, power steering, and drivetrain component modules all interact with the new ADAS features being added, as well as what will need to be done to repair components such as sensors and modules. A damaged or corroded wheel speed sensor or steering wheel angle sensor problem will cause adaptive cruise control or lane keeping assist lane departure warning not to function correctly. The vehicle alignment can have a major effect on many safety features old and new as well. 
the integration of all these electronic components and their interaction will only increase in all vehicles each year. Each manufacturer will have quirks and differences that one will be hard pressed to keep up with. The one thing we'll all need to remember is that although there are flow charts and schematics we can use as well as written procedures, these do not account for what happens when that vehicle gets damaged in a crash. The electronic control modules, wires and connectors are all messed up. One module not communicating will affect multiple systems. As if vehicle electronics were not complicated enough, the vehicle's age and time on the road and how all systems are affected also factor in and make this a very interesting industry, to say the least. I'm Jason Stahl from the AirPro Diagnostics Collision Garage. Thanks for watching.